Assalamualaikum. My name is Amar Hakim bin Muhammad Bahazan. My name is uh, Muhammad Fahim bin Misrun. Uh, hi, Assalamualaikum. My name is Ahmad Nawar Fizuddin bin Ahmad Nuruddin. My name is Muhammad Arif Fikri bin Muhammad Zul. My name is Muhammad Zul Alif Aiman bin Muhammad Zamri. And today, our group would like to present about the international business in China. First of all, what is international business? International business consists of business transaction between the parties from one, from more than one country. For example, uh, of international business transaction include buying material in one country and shipping them to the another for processing and assembly. And then it can be shipping finished product from one country to another for retail sale and then building a plant in a foreign country to capitalize on our labor costs and also borrowing money from the bank in one country to finance operations in another country. The parties involved in such transaction may include private individual, individual companies and group of companies or the governmental agencies. So the countries that involved uh, in the international business may use a different currency and forcing at, at least one party to convert the currency into another. Next, the legal system of the country may differ and then forcing one or more parties to adjust their practices to comply to comply uh, with local law. And last, uh, for the international business that enter the market, we must to check on the culture of the country. So, the party have to adjust its behavior to meet the expectation of the other countries. As we know, China is one of the most largest country in the world with the population about 1.4 billion people. And what made our group choose China because China uh, one of the best country when it comes to the international business. And what made we think so? because um, they have uh, the most power labor force and the most largest manufacturing industry in the world. Next, um, I will talk a little bit about um, the background of the Huawei Technology Companies. So, Huawei Technologies Companies is a Chinese multinational technology corporation that headquartered in Shenzhen. Uh, it designs, then develops and sells telecommunication equipment, consumer electronics and various smart devices. The corporation was founded in 1987 by Ren Fei and Huawei has expanded its business to include building telecommunication networks, providing operational and consulting services and equipment to the enterprises inside and outside of China, and manufacturing co communication device for the consumer market. So the Huawei Corporation was a private was the private company owned by its employees. So if you want to participate, the shareholders you must join the Huawei Corporation. And I will talk about the profile of the country, which is uh, China. Okay, so I will uh, just summarize the history before independence of China. So China, officially known as the Republic of China, was called uh, ROC. Uh, was a country in East Asia that existed uh, from 1912 to 1949 and was based in mainland uh, China before the Chinese Civil War forced its government uh, to relocate uh, to Taiwan. It was the world most populated uh, country uh, in 1949 uh, with a population of uh, 541 million people. Uh, Chinese uh, witnessed considerable industrialization after Japan's invasion uh, of Manchuria, KMT and the CCP create uh, the second United Front uh, to fight against Japanese uh, invasion until 1941. Um, in 1945, Japan surrendered at the end of World War II and China recovered control of Taiwan and the Pescadores. After that, uh, Republic of China, uh, 1946, constitutions replacing the 1928 uh, Organic Law 6 uh, as the Republic Fundamental Law. And then the CCP founded uh, the People's Republic of China in Beijing three years later towards the conclusion of the Civil War uh, with the KMT-led ROC shifting its capital from Nanjing uh, to Guangzhou, uh, then Chongqing, Chengdu and finally Taipei. Okay. And then uh, the CCP was victorious 
and the KMT and ROC governments were driven from the Chinese mainland. So I will summarize the history after independence of China uh, on October 1. Uh, 1949, uh, Chinese Communist leader Mao Zedong declared the creation of the People Republic of China, uh, which is uh, called ROC. The announcement ended the costly full scale civil war between uh, the Chinese Communist Party (CCP) and the Nationalist Party or Kuomintang, it's called uh, KMT, uh, which broke out immediately following World War II and had been preceded by on of conflict between the two sides since the 1920. Okay, after that, the China White Paper, written by the Truman administration in August 1949, described previous US policy toward China based on the concept that only China's uh, force could determine uh, the result of their civil war. Okay, then for Truman, this move did not shield his government from acquisitions of losing China. So after that, the Korean War was happened in China and positioned the PRC and the US on opposing sides of an international conflict. And then United States strategies uh, of preserving the Chiang Kai-shek uh, regime on Taiwan stem uh, from Truman's determination to prevent the Korean conflict from spilling so Okay, so finally in 1970, the United States uh, continued to acknowledge the Republic of China, uh, which is based on Taiwan as a China legitimate uh, government and back its claims to the Chinese seats at the United Kingdom. Okay, so when we look at uh, demographic factors of the country China, we can see that the highest population in the China based on their age which is uh, people who are 30 to 34 years old which is with the 8.81% so basically they are all have their job and family and son okay so next uh, 63.4% of the entire population was between the age of 16 and 59 okay next the lowest is people who are 75 to 79 years old with 2.22% uh, uh, population in the China. Next, the gender distribution of the population pyramid. It becomes uh, clear that there is a significant gender disparity in the younger age uh, cohorts, uh, leaving even less potential for birth growth. Okay, and lastly. Uh, the median age in China was uh, 38.4 years uh, population of China country. So China has about the 1448023896 billion population as in J January 2022 based on the latest United Nations data which is around 18.47%. Um, of the total world population and rank as uh, number one uh, in the world, the country with the most population. Okay, next, uh, in 2020, China urban population become increased, uh, which is 60.8%, which is around 875.079.19 million people. Okay, after that, China, known as a world leader of industrial output, means uh, that China still has many rural population until now, which is around 564-247-857 million people in 2020. Okay, after that, according analysis, the most populated city in China uh, is the Shanghai metropolitan area, which is uh, around 22. Uh, 315474 uh, million population at that pace. Okay, so that's all for me. Uh, Assalamualaikum and thank you. Lead industry on China between 1950 and 1979, China gross value of industrial output increased at a quit rate of 13.3 percent per year, according to official Chinese figures. During the first decade, the pace of growth has it had 
was at its highest, averaging 22% each year between 1949 and 1960. Between 1961 and 1974, the annual growth rate declined to around 6% owing in part of the disruption caused by the Great Leap Forward failure and the Cultural Revolution's work, stock age and transportation difficulties. Other than that, China's cotton textile industry which produced yarn, cloth, woolen piece products, knitting wool, silk, jute bags, and synthetic fibers is the world's largest. Labor-intensive light industry account for 49% of overall industrial output during the late 1918 and early 1919 industry boom, but heavy industry and high technology took over in the late 1990. Agriculture has relied on industry for farm machines, chemicals, fertilizers, and insect Incense, insecticides, transportation, power, building, materials, and other the critical goods since 1962. The handicraft cooperative have also been busy, men and male drawn or hand operate equipment. Production of a wide range industrial item has increased, mostly to the mid needs of the country's developing industrial base. Major trading partners of China. China's growth on foreign trade has seen a significant trend not only among ASEAN countries but worldwide. In 2020, ASEAN, the Europe, the US, and Japan, and South Korea are China's top five trading partners. We import and export of 4.7 trillion yuan, 4.5 trillion yuan, 4.06 trillion yuan, 2.2 trillion yuan and 1.97 trillion yuan respectively up 7%, 5.3%, 8.8%, 1.2% and 0.7%. Telephone, computer, integrated circuits, models and staff animal and light fixtures were the China top export. Integrated circuits, crude petroleum, iron ore, gold and petroleum gas was China's biggest import in October 2021. Guangdong Province, Jiangsu Province, Zhejiang Province, Shandong Province, and Shanghai Province were the main export destinations, while Guangdong Province, Shanghai Province, Beijing, Jiangsu Province, and Shandong Province were the main import destinations. China export the majority of its goods to the United States, Hong Kong, South Korea, Japan, and Germany while importing the majority of its goods from Taiwan, South Korea, Japan, the United States, and China. Culture of China Chinese culture back thousands of years making it one of the world's oldest ceramics, architecture, music, literature, martial arts, food, visual arts, philosophy, and religion are a significant aspect of Chinese culture. China officially recognizes 56 ethnic groups with Han Chinese constituting the largest. Despite their merging into the Han identity, several ethnic groups have retained distinct linguistic and regional culture traditions. Even within one ethnic group, there are likely to be numerous subgroups Various various Miao minority group, for example, speak various varieties of the Hmong, Hmong Mi language, Tai Kada language, and Chinese, and follow a range of cultural norms. Religion of China are Confuci Confucianism and Taoism, later joined by Bud Buddhism and the three doctrines, doctrines that have impacted Chinese culture throughout history. There are no clear distinct, distinctions between, between these interconnected religion systems which make no claim to exclusivity. And components from each angry popular or folk, folk religion. Since at least the Shang and Zhou dis, din, dynasties folk or popular religion, the most pervasive system of beliefs and behavior has changed and adapted. 
traditional Chinese medicine which includes herbal medication, acupuncture, massage, exercise, and dietary therapy is based on more than 2,500 years of Chinese medical practice. Its, ide its ideology is based on yin yangism which was later absorbed by Daoism. Disease is defined as an imbalance or discord in the functions of interaction of yin, yang, meridians, and other yin, yang, meridian, and other yin. The pattern of disharmony that can be identified is used to guide therapy. And I'm going to talk about the importance and uh, I'm going to talk about selection function. So selection function is very crucial in order for you to grow, especially if you do business. So good selection means also good results and uh, good selection is also a good investment in future. And uh, as I said before, selection is uh, crucial for management. So there are types of uh, selection function so one of it is uh, selection and assessment consulting which is uh, there are a few types of uh, selection uh, strategies and uh, these also have uh, many design decision and different strategy that we can use uh, depending on how this is uh, depending on the situation and uh, the next one would be the framework so the framework uh, there are two major section of framework and uh, these two uh, major section uh, has a, a complete difference uh, difference purpose and then uh, there are three consideration and there are also importance of the legal risk and then we have the selection decision making strategies they are they are also uh, have a variety types of strategies uh, and these strategy, uh, strategies are uh, so crucial and uh, one of the crucial uh, selection des uh, decision uh, uh, ways or uh, part where we cannot ignore so another one would be the multiples hurdle, hurdle hurdles uh, so uh, there are major consideration one common approach of this issue uh, there are two methods of multiple hurdles and the there are a lot of uh, advantages of hurdles okay and then we have the comp compensatory scoring so uh, there are selection procedure types of employee uh, as I said before uh, this procedure are not for every employee uh, it is uh, only um, suitable for certain situation uh, for certain employee based on their performance or uh, ability and then uh, this compensatory uh, scoring is very expensive and every expensive stuff comes with good results and good quality and then the next one would be the last one is cut scores so the cut scores uh, have a lot of benefits especially if you have lots of employees and uh, there are factors of hiring organization as I said before and then there is a primary advantage of cut scores which you can uh, observe in the report that I have already uh, uh, stated okay and then uh, that's it for me thank you for having me I'm going to talk about requirement strategies each case have a strategy in which it is planned to give a good result and a smooth process. Various strategies can be used in this manner. Among them are like shared experience, designing a long-term outcome, confident in giving good effort to something, aspire to upgrade. So, are you going to select experience or manager or younger manager? So, in the opinion, the most give the true potential is to choose someone who is more experienced in his particular field. Deciding to choose between an experienced person or younger manager, here it is more to choose an experienced person. This is because have more knowledge in this field, keeping in mind every action that needs to be taken, no need to be instructed and know what to do so this last one what are the conditions you listed prior to the requirement 
when in accepting someone or even giving an opportunity to hold and curtain responsibility we will certainly give a condition condition listed prior to the requirement is like someone who accept is it the level or height of knowledge or is considered more to have extensive knowledge during the previous study period like a well profile resume good skill high education good communication and the last one confident so that's all thank you